All righty. Good morning, everybody, or uh, afternoon, or possibly even evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Welcome to the June edition of the Showcase Webinar Series. The title for uh, today's episode is Jack and Slide, Everything You Need to Know. Uh, my name is Jonah Hobson. I'm from ITI. We have a short agenda there on the right. I'm going to do a very brief introduction to, to the guests we have on the line joining us today. We're going to go through kind of the practical applications and kind of the physics behind the hydro slide for one and then horizontal load moving in general. We have uh, Robbins and Morton. We're very pumped for them to join us today. We've got a case study going through the actual use and the horizontal load moving of a condenser unit. And then if we have time at the end of today's presentation, we're going to do a uh, live Q&A over the air. So we have a bunch of guests with us today. Pat Clark from Lifting Gear Hire, uh, Don Mankey and Janine Smith from Hydroslide, and then Frank Green and Sonny Calderon from Robbins and Morton. It's going to be pretty exciting today. We, uh, we're always pushing the limit on the Showcase webinar series, so you're going to see it's a lot of people you're going to be hearing from, but you're going to be able to see who's speaking at all times. We've got the webcams set up. Um, it's optional. You guys can toggle that on and off or not, but it's pretty cool. You can actually put a face to, uh, to a voice and still see the computer screen while we're going. Very briefly, for, for new folks on the line, um, at IPI, we can boil everything we do down to one sentence that you see there. We exist to serve and learn every day. You can see some of the folks we've been lucky enough to work with, uh, to serve, and, and really learn from our customers there. And we have the globe up there because our trainers can go anywhere. We've trained on every continent except for Antarctica. Uh, training centers at six locations in North America, two in, in uh, Brazil as well. So. That is ITI in a nutshell. We have uh, Lifting Gear Hire. They're actually our, our showcase webinar partner for 2016. Um, they came to us about the idea. Everything worked out just perfectly culturally, and our, our mission alignment for both companies is just we're, we're all about the same thing. We want to help the industry. Um, so the partnership just makes sense. And to talk a little bit more a little bit more about I think you're hiring and uh, turn it over to Pat here just for a moment. Uh, thanks, Jonah. Yeah, as you said before, uh, we've, we've started developing a, a partnership with, with fine folks such as ITI uh, in an effort to provide quality information to the, the, our audience. Um, we are absolutely the leader in the industry when it comes to safe, certified, customized uh, rental rigging, hoisting, winching, and material handling equipment. Um, but we also felt strongly by partnering up with folks like ITI and other ones uh, that this will help keep people even even a greater safety degree than before. Uh, so as Jonas said, um, we've got a lot of uh, distribution centers throughout the United States, uh, soon to be Canada. We have 21 locations, uh, but again, everything is, is certified and meets or exceeds um, the ANSI, OSHA, and ASME uh, standards that are out there now. Um, so in a, in a nutshell, um, it's about renting safety, and we we follow that mantra every day. It starts in house. But again, I'm going to flip this back to Jonah. And uh, Jonah, please uh, go ahead. All righty, guys. We'll be hearing plenty more from Pat later. Don't worry about that. Um, back to IPI for a second. Kind of uh, our modalities, if you will, uh, for delivering training. We can go to client locations, as I mentioned. We have training centers in Washington State, in Houston, in Memphis, in Chicago, in Cleveland. Uh, and a satellite facility in Anchorage at this time, as well as a full-time facility in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And then specifically, the training courses, you can see the breakdown there. Um, cranes, rigging, lift planning and management, and certification. We have a certification partner through NCCCO um, to deal with any type of load handling certification. Uh, our company, uh, I mentioned training and e-learning a bit. Uh, I just want everybody to know uh, the ITI Bookstore is a great resource center, um, undoubtedly the largest in the industry. Anything you need, reference cards, uh, ASME standards, um, really anything. Any, any type of tool that's going to help you guys out in the field, you'll be able to find at the ITI Bookstore. Um, we also have a consulting or field services division. And then we have on-site workshops and then webinars like the one we're on today. 
So real quick, I, I, again, I want to thank Hydroslide and Robinson Morton and Lifting Gear Hire for joining us. Um, we're going to have Don Mankey and Janine Smith on the line from Hydroslide. Th what they do is uh, they make skidding systems. So there's two models, a low profile track and a heavy track. And as you can see on the screen, there's different capacities for each, depending on the job and the load. Um, I invite everybody, probably not right now, I stick around for the webinar, but once we're done, check out hydroslide.com for more information. And then Robbins and Morton, again, we have Frank and Sonny with us. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, the Power and Industrial Division was actually founded in 2011, and that's Frank and Sonny represent that division. But uh, they have uh, sectors that are they're very busy in healthcare, commercial, government, power, and industrial as of 2011. So check them out online as well, robbinsandmorton.com. And finally, uh, if you guys have questions today, they're bound to come up. Please submit them in the question pane so I can get them to our, our panel at the end of the session. If there's something you're not comfortable asking or you don't want me to ask over the air, that's okay too. Um, you can save that in the question that you submit or you can just email me privately. It's Jonah, J-O-N-A-H at ITI.com. So I think with that is more than enough for me. What I'm going to do now is turn things over to Pat. Uh, we bring up our, our next folks from uh, Robinson Morton. We've got uh, Frank Green uh, as well as Sonny Calderon. I've had a chance to, to get to know these guys uh, a little bit over the last uh, few weeks as we've gotten prepared for this, and uh, we've had a lot of fun. But uh, one thing's for sure, these guys, uh, despite looking at at them, you know, you just see Sonny. Uh, Sonny looks like he's 16, 17 years old, but he... You know, these guys are pros. These guys have a lot of uh, knowledge behind them, a lot of experience, and, and we're just going to go to the tip of the iceberg today and talk about a Jack and Slide case study. So I want to welcome here. I'm going to let them tell their story uh, and, and take it from here. So thanks, gents. So, uh, Frank and I are from Robbins Morton Power and Industrial, which was founded in 2011. We're a full-blown EPC firm. So we do uh, power plants, profit plants, chemical plant, lower refineries, anything. So what we had to do was we had two 305 ton condenser units that were going underneath an SDG tabletop for a full on one combined cycle. The uh, tabletop is a concrete foundation. It's got uh, columns and it's got a concrete tabletop and the condenser sliding underneath in between the columns and underneath the tabletop. It's uh, eight foot of concrete on the top of the tabletop, uh, the crane just wasn't an option. We had to come up with something else. So what we did is we were just going to, normally Frank and I would just we'll build our own skidding system, our own jack and fly system out of channel iron and other things. We'll use our own jack. But uh, So we contacted Listen Gear Hire and started telling them that we needed skates and we needed some channel iron. And, you know, my rep, Dan Gomez, he said, well, what are you trying to do? I explained to him what the situation was, and he told me all about Hydroslide and showed me the video. And, how easy it was to use, and so that's what he sent me all the dimensions on the shoes and the skid system, and uh, it was going to meet our clearance requirements. We had about two inches on each side and uh, four to one inch up top, so it was really tight and didn't have a lot of headroom. So I'm going to I'm going to stop you right there. A lot um, there's a lot of methods out there. What you said in the past, what did you guys use to bring these in? In the past, what normally is a channel iron turned upside down with Hellman rollers underneath the condensers or whatever we're typically moving. And like Don was mentioning earlier, uh, things tend to get away on rollers. Yeah. And we needed to stay controlled and we had open trenches that we had to cover and other issues. Because a lot of these methods go back to building the pyramids, right? These are tried and true methods. <laughs> um, they're still used today. So uh, in the past, what were some of those what were some of those negatives about using an uncontrolled system? Don had his experience, but you guys had also real experience with using that with channel rollers. Well, a lot of times we have to use a tugger, and you'll have a tugger up front, and you'll have to contact the vendor for whatever it is that you're trying to roll in, see if your connecting points are okay engineering-wise. Then you have to have the tugger on the back end as a catch. You'll have to, you know, check out what your fleet angles are, and, and it's a lot of engineering, and it's a lot of time. It's a whole lot more time than. This skid system here, all the tracks work simultaneously, so you're not pushing one against another. That's one of the biggest problems we come up when we do 
one of these without hydrocytes. Can you explain that a little bit more in detail? It'll, like, you might have, they work simultaneously, so they move at the same time instead of having a cocking motion, which will throw, it'll throw your jack inside completely off 100%. So in the past, you'd, you'd use cylinders, but they weren't necessarily tied together. And if they right, were, it was right. a manifold, and that also brought in some extra fa factors versus using hydroslide and their hydro pack, which right. is designed to synchronously push those. That would, exactly. okay. They're relying on people pushing four to powers. Yeah. Past. So we got out of having to do all of that engineering, calculate what kind of tuggers we needed, and we just Hydrocyte sent us everything we needed, and Lifting Gear Hire provided us with all the measurements, all the specs that we needed to convince our client, convince ourselves this is the system we need to go by and use. Yeah, and you 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 met um, Danny, but had you worked with us in the past? I've worked, we've rented some rigging from you guys on our past project. You have what? Um, in other project, would you would you happen to run across? On a jack and side type system? Just other other pieces of equipment. Oh, we've rented uh, chain falls, chain spreader ball. beans. You know, spreader beans, a lot of spreader beans yeah. down there on our project that we have going on in Orlando right now. We have several yeah. spreader beans uh, in a project block. in uh, Arkansas not too long ago uh, using heavy chain blocks and nylon rigging. And we had to get special from you all. And from a standpoint of um, the rigging, you, I think you guys had a, a pretty substantial lift that I know if, if we had more time, we'd talk more about that, but. We rented most of our rigging from Lucy Gear Hire for our HRSIG modules that were bulk supplied and over 550,000 pounds each. But we also rented all of our rigging from Lucy Gear Hire for uh, the second largest steam turbine in the United States when we went to it. And uh, all of our lists went perfectly. They were all critical lists. And Lucy Gear Hire sent us all the specs we needed, all the certification, everything we needed to a T to back up our insurance and everything we needed in case something happened. So we had everything we needed, and we had it in a timely manner, too. So, so Danny comes in, he comes in the trailer, uh, I think along with, you met Bob, Bob Crabb, another, uh, another personnel of lifting gears, and you determined that they have Hydroslide. Had you worked with Hydroslide's equipment before? I know you've had other jack and slide yeah. pieces of equipment, okay. Um, what, what, if any, did um, value did Danny and, and Bob bring to, I mean, you guys are pros, right? Robinson, Robinson Moore is, a, is an established, reputable company, so how, how were they able to help you? You know, it's just like I said, Danny gave us everything we needed, the spec sheet, he, you know. He first, I wasn't going to tell him what I was doing, I just told him I needed to slide something really heavy into a tight spot, and I started, I knew what I wanted to do, so I started telling him I needed some rollers and some channel iron, and he asked me what he's trying to do, and I explained to him the situation, and he said, have you checked out this hydro side? You know, he got on YouTube, he showed me the video of how it works and the clearance issues, and once he gave me the specs on the shoes and the slides, I realized it was going to give us the headroom we needed for such a tight spot. Cool. So, talk, so talk about your challenges that you guys had then. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, one of the challenges here going in with these condensers, we had an open pit on the back side, six foot deep, ten to twelve foot wide, and we had to span that gap coming through with the condenser. So, the tracks being as rated what they are, we we're able to span that gap with ease and not have something like Sunday and I are used to doing that with a cobbled up mess, trying to span across it and a lot of engineering going into it. The engineering was already done. Yeah. So we were able to put them in relatively easy. And keeping in control was the other thing. You know, using past skid distance like Sunny brought up, not having things synchronized or uh, and the skids would get angled on the track itself and we never ran into any of those issues with this system. It went really smooth. You really don't have to worry about it running away with their stop system on this either. You don't have to have a tugger on the other side pulling the opposite direction. Right. They've got stop blocks on the back end of this. So, you know, like Frank said, all the engineering is taken care of. So there goes several weeks worth of planning. There goes several weeks worth of money and engineering. you got everything you need right there. So we're going to walk through um, in a moment here a 3D animation that you're going to show us. You're also going to show us some of the installation of the track so people can, can kind of put you know, the whole piece together here. So. Um, Please go on. Uh, here's just your other considerations that you could use that we were just talking about. That, this is actually on the other side of the tabletop, this is the inside, and you can barely see the daylight there, so you see how much room we had to work with on the side pulling that connector in. And, and how, much, how much clearance did you have? You have two inches on the side, and you have four to one inch on, on the top, so it's a really tight space, no yeah. headroom. All right, so if you want to jump over here, Sonny, uh, we'll get you on the 
uh, 3D animation. So here's that same view again on the other side of the of the STG. This is how far we had to come in. This right here is a six foot pit and uh, you know lifting gear higher. And Hydroside supplied us with all the information we needed to know how much pressure we were putting on this track throughout here. This essentially shows you everything. That's your SDG tabletop. And then here's the view from the other side. Well, I guess it's just doing whatever it wants to do, Patrick. <laughs> but yeah, it gives you a better, larger picture of what was going on. Oh, you, can yeah, switch to this. you can switch to this one, too. This, is this one you're showing first? Yeah, we could just show the good view of everything. Okay. I guess this is, this is in your, your planning stages. And, and what's this for? Is this for your crew? Or who are you, who is this is a of 3D relief plan that we drew up. We had to show the client what we were going to do, how we were going to slide it. This is actually drawn to scale, so it shows the dimensions. And, we were able to, you know, using the cut sheets provided by us by Hydro Slide and Lift Gear Hire, we were able to know exactly what to see if this was going to work or not. Okay. Let's switch back to the, uh, the presentation portion. I need a mouse here. So what are, we, uh, what are we doing here? So right here we're flying tracks into place. Now these tracks are really light. They've got a pick point. They've got four pick points. They're really easy to go in. And they just link right together. And it's just like Legos. One of the good things about the system, you know, it's minimal manpower putting this together instead of having a crew of 20 people yeah. trying to fabricate something. And it, Like Tony just said, it's Put it together like Legos, put it in place, use a crowbar and get it pinned up and you're moving along. Actually this next video actually shows how light they are. That's actually just rain on the ground, it had just rain. And they're just scooting it around with uh, just a crowbar and put it in place. I'm seeing right there is some of their, uh, as Don explained earlier, there's some of their connecting, uh, connecting bars and then they just get pinned together. Right. Mm -hmm. You can see in that picture right there is a pre-designed lift points already on the system. So yeah. you're not trying to bull rig something in as well. They've already done all that for you. Right. Okay. So right here you see a picture of the condenser unit underneath the engine jack and section for it. So after you've already uh, checked You've used the hydraulic cylinder, uh, jacked up, and then now at this point, it's it's now on the skid track, and I right. think we saw this, this cylinder here advancing, actually doing the pushing, right? Yeah. Okay. One of the best things about this system is you're not constantly resetting a jacking system. The uh, hydraulic cylinders in it actually come out and they reset themselves on the net set of low. So you're not sitting there moving them every single time. Which is something that saved us a bit, because normally you got people positioned at each cylinder having to reset them as you're going in. And their system, you don't have to do that. Yeah. That's also where you can run into a lot of problems, you know, as far as shifting something to the side. These things, they work simultaneously, and they both hit the same set of tracks at the same time as they reset themselves. So. Right. You know, we had probably four guys running this whole thing, this whole show, putting it together and moving it in. Hmm. Uh, he see, we, we saved a lot of time, labor, engineering hours. We saved, you know, home office hours. We, we got this done really quick. It was extremely safe. I actually had an elevation change. We went from six inches, we made a six inch jump bump in the air onto another slab. And if everything went fast and fine. We really did not run into any issues with this. Uh, if you're worried about using it, you know, HydroSlide and Lister Gear Hire actually sent a guy down to show how to use the hydraulic system. He ran our guys through it real quick. 
And we threw these in the place, no problem. How important was that to you? Was it necessary or? You know, I think it was an, it's an easy system, but yeah. it's good to show people how it works. Yeah. Yeah, and both and again, both companies. I think that's that's the case. Is is it's very safe, and and that's and that's first and foremost, especially when you're moving in you know, 300 ton plus ton units, right? Um, this this all sounds great, and you know, it almost seems like um, um, you know a, a a love fest, a sales presentation going on. <laughs> what you know that Billy Banks fellow who used to sell uh, OxyClean on TV, right? That guy. Right. Um, really, what? What what challenges did you, did you have? What what didn't go as expected using this system? There's absolutely nothing I can say that went wrong. Oh, I wish I could complain about something like, like me and Frank have said. <laughs> Normally, when we build one of these things, we just build it and we just kind of hodgepodge it and we just we just build a piece Shoot here, from the hip, yeah, a piece there. It go. And if we've got to get some engineers involved, we do. And you know, these guys have got all the engineers taken care of, all the parts and pieces taken care of. It snaps together like a layer. So it's easy and there's just so many different applications you can use this for. I would highly consider it before you know, think about using the frame. If you can't get in touch with, uh, if you really can't figure it out, you should just call Listen Gear Hire anyways. Yeah. Or call Hydroslide if you want to purchase one. And just, you know, Listen Gear Hire can get you one. And if you can't figure it out, they can come down there and show you how to use it. And if you can't do it, Frank and I can come down there and do nice. it. Nice. <laughs> there we go. And to that, in that point, I think everybody on this panel here has a, has a LinkedIn profile to, to learn more about or connect to these guys directly. Because again, we, we know everybody's time is valuable. Some folks might have jumped off. We want you to have an opportunity to to meet these guys, and um, you know they're they're real. We went out to dinner last night and had a had an excellent time. Got a chance to to learn about <laughs> each other. Why are you covering up your face? <laughs> So I mean, these are these are real guys, and you know, it's it's uh, you know, it's always a testament to have them come in here. And a little bit, again, from the standpoint of support from Hydroslide uh, as well, they've been they've been phenomenal about the, the training and the support for us. You know, lifting gear higher, the reps. We really appreciate that from a standpoint of tenure. Um, no, we're up, we're run matched there when it comes to to rigging. Um, we have well over 800, 800 years of rigging and. Uh, rigging uh, and material handling uh, solution experience on staff, and, and that's something that other companies can't even can't even hold a candle to. So again, we value you guys, of course, as a customer. Expect to, to do more with you, um, as long as I don't make fun of you too much, Sonny. I think you'll come back, right? <laughs> right. Is there anything else that you want to talk about here? This is uh, yeah. This is so. This is the um, the last uh, case study with another customer. To what Don's point was earlier, where an application might be is, is a low headroom area where the, you can see in here in the background, you've got an overhead bridge crane, but the capacity wasn't sufficient enough to carry this 350 ton gripper head. Uh, this happened not too long ago, so we'll, we'll play this one. You'll get the gist of really putting all the pieces together of, of how simple and easy this is to use uh, and quick and effective. Very good. So, from a standpoint of support, uh, as, as Sonny and Frank had said, there's um, on our website, on our YouTube page, there is a, a video that we did collaboratively with uh, with Janine uh, for the skidding system itself, going over a lot of important critical things to consider, uh, as well as Robert Smith, their operations, uh, excuse me, Robert Young, their operations manager. Uh, we worked on the hydropack pump to show how easy it was. So, I know we have, both have sources here. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up to see if there's any questions either via the live Twitter feed, Facebook, uh, or ITI Jonah. Uh, I'm going to flip it back to, to you here, buddy. All righty. Thanks, Pat. I'm grabbing the screen here. We did have a couple questions come in um, over the course of the presentation, and I just want to take a little bit of time to, to say thank you again to Don and Janine and and Sonny and, and everybody and you yourself, Pat, for uh, kind of being our host. But uh, no, it's really powerful stuff. It's great to get the background information that was provided earlier and then 
seeing it in the real world application of how uh, we can find a load handling solution. That's what we're all about as a company at ITI when it comes to training solutions. But yeah, just finding the, the right solution for the situation, uh, it's really, really great stuff. So um, a couple of the, the questions were about the coefficient of friction on the hydroslide machine. Um, and I believe Don covered most of those just later in the uh, in the presentation. So that's that's one thing we can check off. Um, this is kind of to everyone. Uh, Don can take it or you yourself, Pat. Um, but there were questions asking about uh, equipment for load turning and how that how that fits in with uh, with a skidding system or or really like we have to skid we can skid the load and then we'll have to turn it eventually too. So what kind of uh, recommendations can you guys make about that? Excellent question. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I'm going to pass over here to uh, to Don to further explain. Um, that's a very unique uh, tool that Lifting Gear has has been looking at for several years now. Um, I think it might take a few more uh, steak dinners from Hyderslide to persuade us. But that being said, it's a very unique and critical tool in there. So with that said, I'll let Don explain the capacities and the purpose behind those turntables. Okay. Um, yeah, over the last couple of years, we've had several requests for uh, for something that will rotate loads, and we've had uh, we currently have several different designs. The smallest one being 150 ton capacity with a six inch diameter turntable. It's only four inches high, so again, it, it fits in with the slide system very low profile. <clears throat> From there, we go up to 250 to 500 ton capacity, eight foot and 10 foot diameter turntables that are about six inches high. And we're now just uh, in the final development stages of a 1,000 ton capacity turntable. Uh, we've gone metric, and this actually is almost 12 foot diameter, but it breaks down, it will fit into a shipping container. That's huge. So, so uh, yeah, we've got several different designs of turntables now, and, and yes, we're going to work on patterns. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's something that's in this table. Sorry, just to add to that, um, a lot of these designs have been customer driven. Uh, Don designed the first turntable years and years ago, and he kind of said, you know, when I came on, oh, it's, it's a really simple thing. It's a steel plate, you know, some grease graphite, uh, turn on it, push the hydraulic cylinders. I don't think anybody's really gonna gonna want those because it's really simple. And uh, in the last five years, we've sold them all over the world, and uh, we had requests. Or do you have a smaller capacity one? Well, could you build one that goes into a container? Can you build a bigger one? And we're like, yeah, we can build whatever whatever the market needs. So um, yeah, we do have them. And on the Hydroslide website, there are uh, a few videos and photos of exactly how they operate. They operate with the same power units and the same principles that apply to our slide system. I, I wanted to add there, um, both on what they were saying, is I've also seen uh, applications whereby they had another hydro slide heavy track system that was cribbed up uh, above this. They could, they, when they want to turn 90 degrees, they could crib up on that unit, slide another system yet, and then change direction as well. Um, and then, as far as Jonah, that 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 um, coefficient of friction uh, question that that we get that a lot uh, through our Facebook. Um, it's it covered in our video, but also it's 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 not recommended to use any type of of lubricant. Uh, whether it's it, it's soap, you know, other oils, because again, they've designed it as Don had mentioned to actually control this. So that 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 coefficient of friction is, is specifically designed that way. So uh, I'll turn back over to you, Jonah. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. Thanks, everybody. Um, just a couple other questions. Again, stuff that was touched on in the uh, presentation. So I can try to address those to you individually off air. Because they were they were touched on, but uh, I, I just want to thank everybody again for uh, for for coming on, all of our guests, and then all of the attendees as well, taking time out of your day um, to learn something new and hopefully spread the word and uh, and yeah, hopefully it's something that can help you in your day to day operations at your work site. So uh, thank you guys, uh, Pat. If you have anything to say with the sign off, I think we can uh, we can wrap it up. Yeah, no, not much. I just again thank our guests, thank you guys for for hosting. I mean, we got a we got a good partnership with again ITI and some other folks out there, including Hyderslide, Robbins, and, and the other manufacturers work with. So thank you everybody on the line for for taking the time, and, and hopefully it benefits you. You know, anybody who will benefit, of course, uh, like and share it on Facebook as well as Twitter, etc. So with that, I'm going to take a breath and some water.
Thanks, Jonah. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Look out for the next um, Showcase Webinar Series edition coming up in July, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you.